types of things. So without further ado, welcome to the TennoCon art panel. Let's meet who's uh, here right now. I guess that's me, I'm Rebecca. I've worked at uh, DE on Warframe since it started and I'll be moderating the panel today with my friends who perhaps want to introduce themselves so you guys can do audio levels at the same time. So we'll start with Matt. Uh, hey everyone, I'm uh, Matt Tremblay. I'm an environment art director and been uh, working on Warframe, I don't know, two years, three years? <laughs> been on it forever. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Mike Brennan, also known as Minky, and I'm uh, another art director, and I focus mostly on characters, also a bit on weapons and other stuff. Hello, my name is Lucas. I'm a weapon artist, but I do also character, vehicles, and um, lots of other things. Yeah, you do tons, and we'll see lots of your stuff today. And at the end there. Uh, I'm Kerry Black. Um, I'm a lead artist on Warframe. We do weapons and lots of stuff, which I have slides to prove. Yeah, there, there's lots of slides here to prove what they're working on. So today what you're going to sit through with this panel, we're going to talk a little bit about the art departments here, what tools they use. So if anyone here is interested in getting in the art discipline um, in the video game industry, you can learn a little quick bit about what each department uses, uh, what your favorite pieces of art are you've ever worked on, most challenging, so those you know artistic moments where you weren't really sure how it was going to go down, your current projects, which you do not want to miss, it's incredible, and then we'll do a Q&A with everyone in the audience that may or may not have an art-related question. So let's talk a little bit about environment art with Matt. So what do you got to say about that, my friend? <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, and as we said, I'm the environment art director. Um, Generally, you know, what is that? That's the environments that you're working in. These guys do all the kind of rock star stuff, you know, weapons and characters and all that. And Don't sell yourself short. Wow, come on. <laughs> and then I work with a team of guys and girls and, uh, you know, passionate developers making the environments. Um, you know, everything from high level concept with the concept art team to uh, taking that with uh, some input from creative direction and talking to Mike about stuff and trying to kind of figure out where we're going with each art set and then uh, work with the team of designers and uh, layout artists, environment artists to make that stuff look as good as we possibly with can. All our factions, all our quirks, you make all those worlds come to life in the game. From That's concept, right. it's awesome, they do yeah. great work. So I'm kind of fangirling right now with you guys because I don't get to work with you a lot, so this is, this is good. Yeah. And Minky, what are you up to? Uh, well, I thought I'd uh, talk about the character team mostly because that's what I focus on. Um, and, uh, you know, the way we work, uh, most of the character concepts uh, either come from me personally or I commission somebody to make them. But then the character team does all the hard work. They uh, model the high and low poly models, they texture them, um, they are responsible for pretty much all the stuff that isn't spec'd out in the concept, which is really a lot. So um, they have to have a r really great sense of design um, and uh, basically a lot of patience to, to fill in all that stuff. So when you're concepting your crazy concepts, it's up to them to model them in 3D. Uh, yeah. yeah, and you know, I have no mercy, so. Uh, <laughs> no, I, they, and we're gonna they, see they work that pretty soon. hard. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to mention them by name, just because you know, they may not get all the uh, kudos they, they deserve. Uh, but uh, Dennis Cawson, he's the lead character modeler. He's somewhere in the crowd. I don't yep. know where. Dennis, raise your hand. I don't know where you are. Oh, there you are. Hey, Dennis. Yay. Yep. So basically, uh, uh, Dennis does a lot of character modeling himself, but he also makes sure that everything gets done. Um, uh, Raymond and Greg, uh, they've both been with the character team for a really long time. They do amazing work. Um, and then uh, somewhat more recent people would be Michael Zagwire and Mike Skyers, who've uh, already, uh, you know, reached uh, basically uh, total mastery of the Warframe style. So, uh, you know, great work on them. And our brand new hire is uh, Nora, uh, who I believe is here too. And, oh. uh, you know, good luck to did, her. But did, she, did she start started. this week? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So she started this week at DE. So that's yep. good job, Nora. All right. So that's it for characters. All right. I have Carrie here now with his team photo, and Lucas, yeah. you're in it too. Yeah. <laughs> he's part of, he, he works as part of our team, but he's kind of like his own one-man army most of the time at this point. So yeah. Um, yeah, we have a small team. We've like doubled in size from two to four, and then you know we're all the way up to five now. It's kind of crazy. Um, we make weapons. 
this is an example, and then we make lots of other stuff. Um, yeah. So this is the old version of the slides. Good to know. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so you know, like we do vehicles now, and sentinels, and capes, which a lot of people here will be getting, and then armor and things like that. So we make lots and lots of stuff. Yeah, and then I think we just have a photo here of Lucas with the group to say that you're. I know we already showed that, but anyway, mm -hmm. we'll go on to tools of the trade now to give you guys a quick look at some of the tools all these different departments use. One of which Matt brought us. Yeah. Uh, well, this is just you know a screen cap of our engine. Um, and you know, on the sidebar there, are just some of the tools that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Um, really, all of the work that we do uh, when it comes to building the environments takes place either in a 3D package and then assembled in our engine here. This is something that our team had developed uh, many years ago, and we've been working with our own proprietary tools since then. I think the uh, Evolution Engine has been around, I think it's seven years, maybe more, we've yeah. been working with that. So, um, you know, all of the generation of the environments, uh, lighting and effects, and, you know, there's so many teams that collaborate or, and work together to create this stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, it all gets assembled in our engine, you know. Uh, and I'm and sure a lot of people recognize that, that, that uh, Grenier Earth part right there. Yeah, and th that's just a Grenier Forest shot. It's, um, you know, one of the kind of sets that I really enjoyed working on. It was a lot of fun to do. Um, and, you know, generally as we go along, they, they, you know, that one was a favorite at some point, And, well, now something else is the favorite, of course. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the tools in a nutshell for us, really. Uh, there's other stuff, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of crossover as well between what these guys would use and what we would use as well, but... Uh, Perhaps a pencil and paper, as Minky has shown us <laughs> on his slide here. The tools of the trade. Uh, yeah, well, I figured uh, the other guys would cover most of the you know, software, computer stuff that they use, but it's worth mentioning, too, that traditional media plays a big role. Like, uh, just having a, a pad of paper and some pencils at your desk is a, a great first start for... Um, jotting down ideas. And uh, when it comes to computer hardware you really need, it's uh, like your Wacom tablet or any brand of tablet, really. Um, that's a photo of mine yeah. in the bottom corner. And which what's that is, on your screen there, Minky? Uh, that's uh, something that will be, I guess, <laughs> not quite revealed, but uh, maybe a little sneak peek at the end of the, uh, the presentation. That's the character we're working on right now. So uh, like a... Dual monitor setup is uh, really handy because uh, you can have your concept up on one monitor and be working on the other one the full time. And uh, the last image is just an example of basically taking it from uh, pencil sketch to the final model. And uh, pencil drawings by my favorite concept artist uh, out there, uh, named uh, Keith Thompson. And uh, his concept turned, in, turned into Rhino. And, uh, and uh, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And I think next up I have uh, Carrie, and I don't know if this is your old slide now, I'm wondering, but it's your whole list of files. Yeah, I mean, I, I use a lot of different software. Like, I use whatever tool is the fastest one to get things done. Uh, as far as the actual art goes, probably the most important ones are ZBrush, um, because you can do concepting and final modeling in that. Something like 3D Studio Max, because again, you can do concepting and final models and all the rest of that in that, which is pretty amazing. Photoshop is pretty standard for everybody. But these days, the biggest thing for texturing is uh, Substance Designer and Painter, which you know, in the last year and a half, two years, has just revolutionized the, uh, the texturing process. Things that used to take a week, take a day. Uh, or sometimes hours, which is kind of stunning and a little depressing when you think of how much time in your life you've wasted. <laughs> yeah, and now it's all, and now know, it's software's taking over your job, man. Sooner or later, yeah. uh, but there's supposed to be somebody to tell what to do, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah, yes. you got it, you're good. <laughs> and then, Lucas, your tools are more or less the same. I just thought yeah. I would, are they, is there anything else you wanted to add that's special? No, 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 I, I use uh, the same Actually, tools. Actually, yeah? he, he does. You use watercolor. Yeah, I, I sketch a lot, I use watercolor just to, you got to explore the ideas when I start concepts, but... Uh, wow, and we're going to see some of those. Uh, we have your favorite art, and so you guys all have your different departments, and we're going to start with Matt, who's got his favorite environment art, which is everything? <laughs> is, am I reading this correctly? Is well, this no. <laughs> uh, you know, I've got just a few samples of three sets that were really a lot of fun for me to work on. And, and, and for me to work on, and that's, that's development from you know, a high-level conversation 
to collaborating with the concept guys to having you know my own silly ideas and saying hey make this even cooler you know and working really closely with the entire team um, to really you know bring that uh, that idea to fruition so you know this is uh, Grenier Ocean which at the time was really awesome you know it was <laughs> super enjoyable for me to work on something that I really really enjoyed and was quite happy with the results of uh, for us as well um, and then a couple of shots there from our most recently released set, which is the uh, Oricon Moon. That's right. We and added the moon to the game finally after yeah. you know, three years. <laughs> Where's the moon? And <laughs> yeah, and if anybody was kind of playing Forest uh, some time ago, you might have actually seen the moon uh, come into the skybox there, which was some people caught it for sure. Yeah, you know, I think we had trying our... to be sneaky that way, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and it's a lot of this stuff is, you know, some of the earlier sets is just kind of cool ideas. Hey, what can we do? Uh, and now, if you've been playing Warframe, as I'm sure all of everyone here has in the past year, you may have noticed that we've started to do more quest, uh, cinematic style quests and things like that. So the moon set was a direct response to some of the things that uh, Steve wanted to do yep. um, in terms of, you know, furthering the lore of the game. So, you yeah, it. that's just a few. You know, every set that I'm working on, the one I'm working on right now, which, which you're gonna we'll see, see soon. later. Yeah. That's I, the new favorite. I think for yours, we don't have anything because everything's your favorite. Am I <laughs> am I also reading that correctly? Well, I I just was a bit late getting the slide in there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I can talk about it though. Yes. Yeah. Like, literally, I don't have a favorite, but um, I just wanted to mention um, it, one thing that kind of made me proud of of what I've accomplished was. Uh, I was just having a really rough time designing something one day, and uh, I was, you know, at home, and we had a deadline coming up really, really soon, and I was getting kind of depressed, and I was like, I've, I've never designed anything cool in my whole life. Like, wh what's wrong with me? Oh. And then oh my gosh. I, I looked, looked over, and I, I saw my Excalibur statue box sitting there, and I was like, wait a second, that's actually kind of cool, like, and you know, that uh, that saved the day for me. So I believe we so have this... an Excalibur cosplay in the audience <laughs> right now, based on your creation, and I can see him holding up the helmet. So there he is, from Minky that was born. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, those those statues are kind of like a, a symbol of what I've accomplished. It's like a nice little tangible thing. So very cool. That's awesome. Oh. And I think I have Carrie next. I'm All gonna right. have to. Sorry, it's in the wrong order, but don't worry. But yeah. that's your slot. This is your favorite. Yeah, it pretty much is. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it became part of a rather big thing for the game, which was kind of cool. And uh, I think it was a piece that went really well from a technical front. Um, I think the most recent version of the slide would say that usually my favorite thing is the next thing that we do. Yeah. Oh, that, which so tends I to be true. Yeah. Yeah. I, Dean has those, so. There we so go. Dean is <laughs> laughing at me over in the corner because he knows he has the slides and I don't. So. But anyway, uh, this one was great though because it was like a four day make from when the concept came through to the final, uh, which is kind of stunning when I think of how long it would have taken me ages ago. And the sentient stuff is uh, pretty bonkers. You know, there's a lot of hard surface in there. There's a lot of sculpting. It's pretty cool. So yeah. But your favorite is also the next thing you're working on. Pretty much. Just to yeah. clarify the record here. It's yeah. Only... Yeah. That's what the that was, would would be the case. And I see Lucas grinning as he knows his favorite thing. Mm. Yeah, Miss I, Kayla. I really like uh, to work on Kayla. The thing is, I love Grenier, and I think. I would love to see, uh, to being able to play as a Grenier and kick some ten of us, right? <laughs> yeah. But, oh, what? That's kind of my fantasy. I don't know. It would not probably. We not talked about happen, this. You have to be pro Tenno on this stage. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just so kidding. I like He's his a calibre. <laughs> so yeah, I work uh, on those concepts at uh, home because I'm not a character artist, but I wanted to try. But uh, Minky was there to, just to guide me, to help me a lot. So this is the high poly of uh, Kela, made in ZBrush. It was uh, lots of work, and the f one of my first character, really complex ones that went oh, yeah. in a game. So that was uh, kind of hard. And one of the most difficult things in this one was uh, to make the face, right? It was the only thing that didn't look like a robot that you could, like, make like wrong anatomy things, it had to be kind of correct, so, yeah. It was definitely a huge uh, task because this is one of the first, you know, female villains that ever 
got yeah. redone to the yeah. game. So just the, the pressure you had on you for this and the character that you guys built around her with the environments and her, you know, her attitudes were crazy. So you, I think you knocked it out of the park, I have to say. She's pretty terrifying. On this one, it's the character in-game. Um, the rig team did all the rigging. It was like multiple person. And uh, I think it's Scott Johnston that did like the pose and the animation in there. So really good work from yeah. there. She's a very scary oh. lady. She is, we just added her, you know, in the past uh, three months, I think, in game. So she's a rather new addition to the boss arena of Warframe. And she's a crazy boss fight. It's kind of like this gladiator style arena. You have to prove your way up the ranks to fight her. And then she kind of toys with her prey. So it's pretty, uh, pretty scary. Pretty challenging, I would say. In fact, the most challenging. <laughs> I know, right? My, give my frag segues away for with uh, free legress, nice and free for you guys. But you have nothing for this slide, Matt. Don't I? No. No, nothing's challenging. I know. It's all easy. <laughs> All right, we're going to take that as official developer answer. Nothing is challenging in environment art. No, but actually, I think I just shot myself in the foot. I know. So any environment you guys have as a request, just send it because it's so easy. No, you know what? For me and for the team, the, the challenging thing, uh, the environment team anyways, is, is always the thing that we're working on. You know, yeah. if, if you've been with Warframe long enough, you know that we release stuff pretty quickly. You know, there's always new stuff coming out. So we are developing at breakneck speeds a lot of the time. Uh, and it's, it's always a challenge, you know, we want to make you guys as our fans happy, you know, we want to do you proud, we want to be proud with ourselves, so we're always trying to push ourselves and come up with something that's new and interesting and that we haven't done already, and there's a little bit of self-imposed pressure there, you know, <laughs> so the most challenging thing for, for me personally and I think for the, the team that I work with is always the thing that we're working on that has to go out, you know, if, you know, we miss the deadline, well then, you know, you lose a toe or you have to yeah, sacrifice no, no. something, you know. Yeah, we're pretty mean, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Minky. Uh, yeah, well, I chose, it seems to me like the, uh, the Warframes are getting harder and harder to design. You'd think it would be easier and easier over time, but uh, it's pretty much the opposite. <laughs> and, uh, um, in a way, I think it's a side effect of actually trying to plan ahead too much, because in the old days, um, we just had to put something out really fast and we had no time to think about it. And now it's a, a matter of overthinking pretty much everything. So <laughs> an example is uh, this is the uh, fairy themed Warframe, a fairy butterfly thing coming out pretty soon. Yep. And uh, it um, went through a lot of just weird ideas. Uh, these are <laughs> some of them. Um, <laughs> A lo I've never seen you attach so many ideas to a Warframe task before. Yeah. It was <laughs> so you know it just kept going back and forth until it finally uh, solidified. Uh, funny thing is, I right at the beginning of the task, I told myself uh, there's no way I can do the typical uh, kind of bug-eyed helmet thing <laughs> that's just been done way too many times. Like just avoid that concept completely. Uh, but it turned out that. Uh, at the very last minute, I was like, I can't come up with a good helmet. Let's try the bug-eyed thing. And uh, I think I did a bit of a spin on it that is not, not too typical. So uh, it ended up working out in the end. So, uh, and in the end, yep. we had... So that was the uh, concept we showed at, I believe it was PAX, yes, not correct. too long ago. Um, so that's as far as I took it. And then the next image is the very uh, last final finished model. Um, mostly Raymond uh, de la Cruz um, modeled it, and uh, Greg did the wings, and you know they obviously did an awesome job. So uh, that's yeah, that's, that's so it good. It, my heart is skipping to be <laughs> looking at her. I'm so excited. Beautiful. Cool. And I think uh, this, I think, is the real slide for you. Your yeah, most challenging, is, and yeah. it is a picture of your beautiful daughter. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so most Which challenging for you is doing anything with no sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, actually having real life intrude, and uh, I don't know how many people are parents or not, but you know, you're, you're a little bit brain dead for a long time. So um, unlike Minky, I like to think ahead a lot, and you know, this really prevents that. You know, like, it's amazing how large an interruption Well, is. you have a beautiful daughter. This is a bonus. Yeah, there you go. And then Lucas, challenge time. Yes, uh, I did, uh, I had the task to do one landing craft just after the first reset. Right. So this was uh, already uh, really uh, challenging uh, things, right? So there, there was like uh, some concept. 
And then uh, Minky said to me, uh, I'm not sure about those ideas, if you can build them in 3D directly, and then I can pick and choose. If you can get one back. I think this is the only one I have between this one. Oh, OK. Yeah. There was one oh, that sorry. missed, but yeah. it's all right. <laughs> and uh, he asked me, yeah, like, do this one in 3D, paint over, then I can see it uh, really how it will look like because those are just like side, you don't have like every like volume. It was kind of a crazy time for you because we decided we should give players more ships and then yeah. it was like someone's got to make them, so. Exactly, yeah. and Minky said like, try this in 3D so it's more time, I paint over, I was really happy with the result and then it was like, nah, no, I don't like this idea, so I was like, ah. <laughs> But then I did those two because we were like, oh, I want to see those two in 3D. So I was like, oh my God, I will, this will not end. Yeah. And I did those ones. <laughs> I was like really scared, like, oh, do you like them? And then he was like, yeah, I like them both. I was like, okay. So now you got to do both of them. That's exactly. When you're so good, you have to show your work and then you have to do more of it. Yeah, but it was really good. It was really hard to just do those steps to, go, to get there. But now I do everything in 3D now, and uh, it's really good for like uh, art director just to being able to to see the final uh, object there. They can turn around. They're like, yeah, it's good. I'll just change these more things. And, and when you save that little spot for the Warframe to come out of right in the belly, the yeah, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> and then like uh, something. The second challenge was uh, it's really huge. And I had to put like so much detail in there, not to being like, oh, it's huge, but you can see like, the pixel. So I took like a lot of time uh, modeling the details in there. And at one point, I was just uh, closing my eyes and seeing the brush <laughs> and the pen. I, I have a nightmare about it. <laughs> I, one day, I had this nightmare about I was working on it and I was doing everything wrong. Oh. And it's last, and when I wake up, I was like, oh no, it's a nightmare. It's and I was like, so like, You oh. dream of landing crafts, that's dedication. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like really hard. Yeah. So yeah. I think, um, yeah, well, yeah. yeah and those are just like uh, skins that I made. One of them's uh, unreleased. I don't know if anyone can catch which one's coming soon. Wink, yes. wink. I know. For like update 19. Ooh. Ooh, you're bringing spoilers. Look at you. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's of course. It's, it's, okay. <laughs> it's part of the demands for the panel. Okay. Is you have to spoil everyone rotten with uh, okay, cool. unreleased content. And this one is, uh, yeah. Actually, this one was the first one that I made. Uh, I was like so hard. And I guess that kind of aligns and well. The, and then like, you can just see there. This is the size of it. Then yeah. when you do a character, it's a small little uh, Excalibur. Excalibur. And what I used to do was a little red dot. So this was like the difference of detail, right? I had to make it feel <laughs> this scale. Oh my and God. I used to do like these small things. So that's it. All right. And those are a zoom All of the detail. That, those, this is when the nightmare started or ended? Ended. Now it's like a <laughs> that was screenshot. Mid -nightmare. Really happy about it. So. All right. So right now, as you guys know, Warframe is a game that is constantly updating. We are actually we just updated yesterday on PC with Spectres of the Rail, which is the biggest update of the year. And here we are at Denocon too. So good time. Yeah. But as always, even though we just put out an update that is huge, we're still working on new stuff. So what's going on here, Matt? Oh. Well, uh, that's, that's part of update 19. Um, you may or may not be able to tell, but that's a Grenier set that we're working on. Um, definitely, uh, you know, an expansion of the Grenier um, aesthetic and the, the, the Grenier faction that we have. Um, this is new content, you know, a brand new environment. Um, a lot of times what we do is, you know, take something and, you know, reskin it or you know build uh, more tiles for it um, if you don't know our our the levels you're playing are somewhat uh, procedurally built so you know we always add a new content you know we need a, a new room for this or a new room for that and this is uh, going to be a quest uh, based the set. next huge cinematic quest yeah a really awesome Ooh, quest that's coming together um, and uh, it's definitely a little bit of a it's not a departure, but it's an expansion of the Grenier set. Um, so something that we haven't quite done uh, exactly this way yeah, before. It's a very important uh, 
style set for the faction itself. You're seeing things here that you've never seen established from this faction. You know, they're the military, and you know they have that sort of evil uh, overlords Layer, going on. Right. And uh, you yeah, know. so I, I'm personally, I'm looking really, uh, really looking forward to it coming out. Uh, the team of designers and layout peeps, uh, as well as our 3D team, have been working really hard on this. Uh, it's been we've been working on it for a while, you know. Yes. Um, but uh, playing through the initial uh, procedurals right now looks really awesome. The team has done such an awesome job, and I'm really, really looking forward to you guys getting your hands on it and being able to play through it. I'm excited it, for that. It's coming in July, is it not? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, so. Yes? Yeah. Do you have to get back to work? Should I let uh, you go? Maybe after yeah. this I'm going back, yeah. And now we're going to uh, carry in his team's current projects. And D Dean gave me these slides, so right. if something's not right, we can blame him. I know well, you're looking at me, Dean. I always but think we'd have very little if we did. So. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Is that right? I Is that, yeah. This better be the yeah, right slide, because if it's fun. not in that reaction. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be pretty screwed. So uh, Andrew is actually here today, so you'll see him yeah. around, and he is uh, gone. He's at the art wall. Yeah, he's at yeah. the art wall. Yeah. Ironically. Yeah. So say hello to him. Uh, he made this from a concept from Cesar, and it's brilliant. I mean, it's a great interpretation, um, incredibly well crafted, and uh, yeah, so gorgeous so new tigress. And uh, well, should I show the? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I like the original Galatine, like Scott had a request to make a really big sword from somebody who was on the design council, and now here's the prime version of a really yeah. big sword. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't even know if I can show the next slide now with this energy level. There you go. It's, uh, I don't know if I can, I mean, all right. Oh, oh okay. So, this is some Warframe coming out sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can look forward to that coming. Yeah, this is a, uh, yeah, woo! <laughs> I, I can't wait. This is a uh, huge part of our game is just everything you guys do and release. So this is what you're currently working on, I guess, eh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what, can, what more can you say? And then yep. to add to that, we're going to give you a full cycle of uh, Lucas's current uh, project, starting with concept. I'm really like, it will not be that much like. It's Nova that is getting a deluxe skin. <laughs> so, Nova, I really like Nova. It's yeah. my favorite character. Do you have She's her on so your good. shirt right now? Yes. Yeah. She's. Uh, oh, there she is. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. And you made that yourself, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I really liked her. So, I asked Minky, can I do this? So, he said, yes, it was really nice. And I went with a lots of ideas. I, uh, but then, like Minky, uh, uh, oriented me about like these Buddhist kind of things with a German-like helmet. So it was really interesting to work on the concept. This was just finished um, Monday. Yeah. yeah, I just finished working on Monday. This is like the concept in 3D. So that helped a lot. I did like a staff too, and. Uh, Siandana. Oh, yeah, right. It's a little effigy. So it's kind of a little puppet that will dangle oh, that's so cute. on your back. You, right? you brought us a lot of beautiful work in progress here with your current girl. And uh, this is a high poly model. So it was a lot of work, but it was all right. So how does the head thing work? What's going on there? Does it float? I, I don't know. Is that for a rigor? Is that someone else's <laughs> job to figure out? So if I'm not mistaken, you guys just have your crazy concepts. You put all your work together, and then you leave it for someone else to figure out how to rig it. And yeah, Oh, I that's like interesting. That. No, it's more like uh, because she's <laughs> all mystical and things. It's kind of like a horror, but oh. it's more mechanical one. So it's good. Short answer, it floats, yes. Yeah, yeah it's floating. So yeah, and Beautiful. there are like some details of the sculpture that I did in ZBrush. The Who's color palette here is blowing my mind. Yeah, Minky wanted something more like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, no, it's not this. But uh, he liked the color. And the end on the back, we are trying to get this work, but normally when you cast uh, your power, the hand will appear, do the shape, and then she will do it too. Oh. And then like, she will appear there and just go there. Yeah. But 
it's work in progress, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just leave this to the rig and animation part, <laughs> and I'm like, guys, you should do that. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, as always with our deluxe skin bundles, we add, as you said, uh, you know, this time it's going to be a Cyandana and a skin for what looks like would be the Tonbo or a staff weapon, so. It's... Uh, the monk stuff? I so the ton. Yeah. Tapito, you're going with the Tapito. Gotcha. I think, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. So that's what's currently on the plates of our art team here. Now we're going to go into Q&A, and I think they have a floating mic, uh, Dean, there. So if anyone has any questions for our art team here, I think you can line up with Dean uh, just at the front there. Yeah, just on the right side of the stage. There just you there. go with Dean. All right. We'll get some questions for you guys. Hopefully you're ready. Again, I'll thank you in advance. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, you guys brought amazing stuff, and you guys work your asses off here. And sorry for swearing, but it's true. And it's, you know, really appreciate your work all the time, guys. But uh, the fans got some questions for you. So let's start off there. Talk nice and loud. Hey there. Um, the quick question I have is how much iteration do, say, environment or the art goes through with the engineering teams? As I know, especially with procedural generation, you can have some complications there. Yeah, well, we, there, there is definitely, you know, you can run into complications and things like that, but, uh, you know, we've been doing this for a good period of time. We kind of have an idea of what's going to go wrong. Um, you know, the stuff that is challenging uh, for the environment art team, uh, you know, and I'll just say that to include layout and design and the 3D, like that entire team, the challenges we face are when we're trying to do something that we haven't done before, you know. Um, so there's always lots of back and forth. The, the great thing about the Warframe team at DE, or in fact, all of the teams at DE, is there's a lot of collaboration. You know? uh, as Lucas was saying, you, know, you create a concept, you build a character, um, and then that has to go to someone else. You know? Because it is such a huge game and because of how quickly we iterate or we create new content, um, you have to rely on, on other people to help you, right? I mean, if it was up to each of us, to make the bit, we'd never put a game out. You know, we, we would never get any of our stuff done. We might get one thing done, and but that's not a game. So, there, there's always back and forth and, and collaboration with the other uh, developers for sure. Great question, thank you. So far for your design, uh, how long does it take for the progress, and where do you get the inspiration from? Ooh, inspiration. Uh, sorry, I missed. Uh, how long does it take for what? What was the first part? Uh, the uh, progress of uh, making the Warframe. Oh, progress oh like a Warframe? Frame. <laughs> um, it uh, varies greatly. I think uh, when we first started out, we were working on a really compressed schedule. And uh, we tended to have like maybe only a week and a half or two weeks to come up with an idea, make a concept, make the model, make it work. Um, so that was, that was like way too fast, but we had to do it. Um, currently, it's uh, probably uh, concepting can still vary, because we, we pretty much wait until we have a good idea before we do it. Um, but then once we have the idea nailed down, it takes probably three to four weeks to build uh, the model uh, fully. Then it takes uh, a little while to rig and do some custom, custom animations. So it can take like another couple weeks. And uh, then there's a lot of simultaneous stuff going on with uh, working out the powers and that kind of stuff. So you know, all told, it can take maybe a month and a half or even a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Next up, I see a nice collector shirt there. My question is, um, are the console players ever going to see the steamed skins? And how is that being bridged? That's actually me and you, Carrie, I think. Yeah. Or is it all me at this point? I, you can actually probably take that as much. I mean, like, we're going, I know what we're going to do, but it's definitely your thing. Yeah. So I've been working on this when I've not been working on TennoCon and everything else. And luckily, we have progress. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take the top items of the current market and import them over to consoles um, hopefully within the next two months, I think. You are going to be seeing TennoGen. You're going to be seeing it for Platinum. We're working exclusively with the... Con we have the... Again, it's all a legal thing. None of us are lawyers. And now that we have the groundwork there to support our basically new business <laughs> initiative with this, we are going to be doing it as soon as we can. Things are drafted. We have approval from all key stakeholders at the various places. So we are moving forward on it. It's happening. You'll be seeing it coming uh, to your consoles, Xbox One and PS4, 
hopefully before the end of the summer. Uh, I actually have uh, two, two questions for you. One of them is, how old does a Warframe need to be before you release a Prime version of it? And another is, I heard stories about Excalibur Umbra. When is that going to be announced or revealed? If you don't mind me asking. Ooh, right for the Umbra. All right, I guess you can do the first Prime question. It's a, that's a combo of frame and weapon. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can pretty much uh, give the general answer, which is... Uh, definitely no set time, but we do want to kind of do them in rough order of release. So we usually want to prime something, uh, you know, in order. So we don't want to prime something that just came out most of the time. But there's definitely going to be exceptions. Um, we're bound to do a more recent uh, frame someday. So, yep. And for Umbra, uh, I actually have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just made the content, and then it's up to, yeah, yeah. actually, I believe um, we can't say anything for obvious reasons, because in the same way, if we spoil the second dream, we don't want to spoil possible things. But stay tuned. It is, uh, it is, is that still true? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm telling, well, 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 I'm sure someone will ask this at 10 live tonight again, and we'll get an even better answer then. But that's my current understanding. So thank you. Um, who are you planning to vault for Necros Prime? Um, would it be Nyx? No, sh I'm just trying to think. Sorry, my brain's been fried since doing this. I I'll, I'll let you know, but it's going to be whoever was released after the one we just vaulted. It is Nyx, right? Who's someone saying Nyx and confirming yeah, it? Yeah, people are saying Nyx over here. Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's Nyx. So, <laughs> as sad as that makes me, since Nyx Prime is the best Warframe in the game. <laughs> Start collecting her parts now. As I say, not having really played the new uh, Void system that we just released on PC. So I'll try that, and then I'll let you know. But yeah, that should be correct, if I'm not mistaken. I know I could be wrong, but... Uh, hi, uh, Southpaw018. Uh, oh, true, hi, t true to my name, um, are there any plans to mirror the animation sets so that I can set my character to be left-handed? Um, well, I guess that would be a question more for Jeff. Uh, so you will have to ask that later. <laughs> That's uh, probably a yeah, tonight yeah. question. So I couldn't tell you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Southpaw. You keep fighting the good fight, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, my favorite thing to do in Warframe is actually screw around with the dojo. Is there any... <laughs> That's yeah. his area. <laughs> is there any plans to add like more rooms, more decorations, more stuff to put in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the dojo is one of those places that we thought would be a cool thing to do, and uh, it absolutely is. Unfortunately, you know, uh, other things have kind of taken priority, but we, we are actually just last week started having conversations about it again. So yeah, uh, there'll definitely be new stuff to put in there. There'll be some new rooms. You know, there might even be a facelift. We'll, we'll see. Uh, there's nothing really set in stone as to what it is, but it's definitely on the radar. I can say one thing that's set in stone, and it's oh, happening here at the convention. Right. So if you're an artist, a budding concept artist of any kind, we're actually offering all players a chance to get a dojo decoration built. So there's six PCs with Photoshop over there. What we want is a dojo decoration that is a music box. So players that can go in their dojos, build it, and go up to it and play the Warframe soundtrack from their dojo music box. But if anyone here has good ideas for concept art, this is going to be your chance to get that exact thing in game at those PC stations. Our lead concept artist, Eric Better, is over there doing workshops with you guys. So if anyone has any ideas, you can go hop in line. And uh, that is definitely coming before September because we have big plans for it. Awesome. Yes. So that is uh, one thing. I know it's not a you know game changing feature, but it's nice to go in there and play music because it's quite a calming environment and sort of a reprieve from battle to keep your you know your your things going. Just going to do a breakdancing animation set as That's well. That's right. We already have a breakdancing animation set. You say that, and you know that we have two already, and they're awesome. So, good question. Uh, do you have any plans for the deluxe skins or for the future deluxe skins? Make them, for example, if you put them on the Prime Warframes, would they have a different look, or maybe some kind of a mechanic you've done for the Nova deluxe skin for, with the hands? I don't have my glasses oh. on. Is that you, Niku? Yeah, that's oh, me. Hi, Niku. Hi there. Um, that's a good question. Yep, I guess uh, the answer is probably not, uh, unless, yeah, I don't think so. It's just uh, the deluxe skins are very unique and custom, and if we had to have them do something special on Prime, it would be a heck of a lot of extra work. Um, 
But, you know, I'll, I'll think like, about it. Maybe like little golden bits at least, maybe around the shoulders, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> so you can actually see that is actually a prime frame. Uh, but So visually you could determine. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll say probably not, but... Uh. Yeah. There are little <laughs> details now. I know you're asking about the physical model itself, but at this point, the mini-map as of yesterday on Spectres of the Rail now shows you the proper icon of the character. So if you're looking at it from like a, oh, is that a Nova Prime in my party? I want their massive energy pool. Now the mini-map will show you that before you actually couldn't tell unless you looked at the drop-down UI. So there are little things. I know you're asking from an artistic perspective, but if you're asking from a, I want to min-max my party and make sure that guy is a Prime, you can kind of do that now differently. Yep. Real curious, but thank you. Thanks, Niku. Um, seeing how the industry is becoming a lot more competitive, I was wondering if you had any general advice for students who are trying to get into 3D game art. Uh, you know, from my point of view, and it's something that Mike touched on earlier, it's just fundamentals. You know, um, 3D is obviously what we use to build our stuff, but. Uh, you know, if you're trying to become an artist, or if you already are an artist, like having the fundamental skills nailed down and being able to apply that knowledge and that expertise to the 3D tools is, is definitely a great place to start, in my opinion. And then it's just, you know, figure out what your focus is. You know, find your focus. It's characters, it's weapons, it's environments, it's vehicles, you know, and just kill it. Thank you. That's, that's great advice, Jeff. You're very, very good. That is... <laughs> Definitely. Hi. <laughs> that is definitely correct. Be very, very good is, is a good answer. Hello. Um, I have a question about um, the Tenogen building procedures. Sure. Um, I, I've been having some trouble building my tint masks oh. for, for textures, and I was wondering if you had any tips on how to get an accurate read on those. Um, have you read the documentation very, very, very thoroughly? Yes. Yeah. All right. Ask me after the panel. Yeah. <laughs> Kerry is the god of uh, Tenogen yeah. with, uh, with us here. We it, it, it really does get very complicated, actually. And the way that those things layer is a bit of a problem. And then also the way that they get compressed in the end can give you many different places that there can be different problems. Yeah. So unfortunately, it probably the rest of the audience would not like my answers. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what we'll do is, but and just in case now. you are wondering about autographs from this uh, group of panelists here, we are going to walk right over to the booth after they have a three to four o'clock signing there. And so you can catch them there and then you can touch base on those questions yeah, either here sure. or there. Because that is definitely, Tenogen is totally worth it to learn how to do. It's an amazing Absolutely. experience. So yeah. good, good on you for keeping that going and trying. Hello. Hi, uh, this question is for Matt. Uh, well, my initial question was going to be about a uh, dojo lighting update because there's a lot of bugs related to that right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to spin it a different way. Uh, lighting and uh, environmental effects have been one of the biggest changes in Warframe over the course of its development. It's starting to look absolutely fantastic now. I was going to wonder, uh, how much does lighting play into your environmental design? Uh, you know, it, it definitely plays a huge role. And in the past year, uh, Steve and the, the talented guys on our code team have done a ton of amazing things in terms of updating our material systems. Where even just this year, it's is it this year PBR stuff came in? Uh, and actually, no, that would be about a year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. It's that nonstop really PBR gotcha. all yeah, the time. Our lighting system just got an overhaul. Like, we are really, really benefiting from the awesome stuff that Steve's been doing. Um, so, yeah, what we have been doing, you may or may not have noticed as you download, you're getting, you know, pretty large scale downloads. Um, and, and that's because we're revisiting a lot of the earlier sets. We're relighting stuff. Um, and, and if not relighting wholesale, we're kind of rebaking, making sure that some of that stuff that's been left to rot or has invariably rotted over the years gets uh, touched again. Yeah. The, the, the process, you know, we update a ton of stuff all the time, as you guys know. Um, and unfortunately, what that means is that if we change one thing over here, sometimes it ripples through the rest of the game and, and affects things in a way that we hadn't planned for, uh, which, you know, comes across as bad light maps and, you know, ugly stuff. So we're trying to, we're trying to kind of follow behind the advances in our tech to kind of make the art look great. And the goal is to uh, relight the game. Uh, every tile set is getting touched uh, this year. It's a huge task. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm guessing it'll go on into next year as well, but uh, we're touching everything. Thank you for setting some light on that question. Oh. Stop, no. <laughs> 
stop. Save the puns for tonight, Rebecca. Sorry, Dean. <laughs> Sorry. You don't have to clap. It's awful. Hi. I did. Hello. Hi. I believe that concepting and brainstorming is one of the most important parts when you're making art. And I want to ask how your um, strategy for doing your brainstorming at the beginning when you're making all these things, you're making a lot of things, and you must have changed your strategy for brainstorming over time working on this project. Uh, I'll jump in. Sure. Yeah. OK, so it, it does make you will have a different, better character-related answer in seconds. But uh, for us, it has changed a bit. So like, we can get things into the game very, very quickly. So we can take a um, simple poly um, shape and extrude it. So basically almost like a 2D drawing or something like that in Photoshop. Give it depth, put it into the character's hands, see whether or not it's going like, to clip through somebody's face or not. Um, all those sort of things in a matter of seconds. So basically for us it's been like a, a switch to 3D, get things in as fast as we possibly can, make sure that the very basic idea is going to work, and then hand it off for everything else, like color design and all the rest of that. Uh, and actually, I mean, that's kind of to some degree what Mickey does as well. Like, you'd be amazed at how quickly he has a character functionally walking around that has the idea that looks way blobbier than anything that you ever see, but it's there and functioning in days. So. Yep. Um, but he likes 2D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, I'm still a steadfast uh, 2D brainstorming concepting guy. Um, I personally find 3D to just be too much of a it's a like it's got a slight barrier to getting an idea jotted down and that's like too much for my taste so uh keep it simple yeah so i i do think um the roughest of sketches is really the best way to start um and then uh you know refining over time so it's not exactly well i guess it's kind of a strategy but uh it's it's Pretty basic, and it, it, it works every single time. <laughs> and I mean, actually, like the classic doing this for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours now really helps. Actually, like <laughs> experience. Just, yeah, the 10,000 hour uh, Malcolm Gladwell book is kind of true. <laughs> you got it. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Very I think much we have for time for one more, and then we're going to do, um, we're going to walk on over, do last minute talks, and then go over the autograph table. So. Uh, hi, my name is uh, my Indian name is BPNPC, and uh, I just want to say that I love what you're doing, guys. Oh, thank you. And I'll be giving out uh, plat codes and uh, Tano boosters sometime, somewhere in there. There you go. So uh, feel free to find me. Do you have Thanks. a favorite clan in the game? Uh, yeah, War Bros number one. Oh yeah. Amber is thick. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. That's awesome. So uh, actually, you know what? we have time for one more. Okay. Okay. So. Ah, that's loud. All right. So I'm a guy to the Lotus, and I talk. Yeah. Hi, Becca. Hi. <laughs> so I talk to a lot of uh, like the new players all the time, and I constantly hear them say, "Hey, wouldn't it be great if we had this old weapon, possibly in a new way?" So like with the new primes you just showed, would it be possible? Oh, he's holding for me a bottle replica. To show replica. you the wonders of the cult of the blood sauce. Oh my God. That is. Please, a Prime Zorans, anyone? I I I'll beg, Binky. I will on stage. <laughs> I think if you come present that to us, bowing down, it will increase your chances of your demands coming true. You don't need to bow, but you can. Oh, nice. This is beautiful. This is a replica dual Zoran skin. Oh, come right on up, my friend. <laughs> will you show him some largesse and, and build what he demands? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't want to throw you out of the spot. You can hit that. That is awesome. Yeah, Thank you. It yep. Yeah, it's weapons, so carry. What do you say? Probably, yeah. Uh, let's make sure we take a very good picture of it. And, yeah. uh, all right. <laughs> cool. You. Yeah, we probably can do something. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to send you guys over to the autograph table now. I know you got some follow up questions to answer. All audience members here at TennoCon 2016, our first ever con. Thank you so much for being so passionate about our game, coming here, asking these questions, sitting down, being patient with us, learning about the process, growing with us. I can't say it enough. And you guys made it all possible all the time with your amazing work and dedication. We love you guys. I'm fangirling. I'm sure they are too. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much, everybody.